We all wonder, wonder what it would be like to fly, to have incredible power, to journey to a world beyond anything we thought possible. We wish, we hope, we dream. Then we come to realise, wonder can be real after all. Lumos Maxima! Hello and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks. Old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we grab our wands and put on our robes as we explore Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion-based dark ride that opened at Universal's Islands of Adventure on June 18, 2010, Universal Studios Japan on July 15, 2014, and Universal Studios Hollywood on April 7, 2016. This attraction was suggested by all the students of the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, so thank you to everyone for the comments. As always, if there's an attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Based on the Harry Potter franchise, adapting elements from the Warner Brothers film series and the original novels by J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is the centerpiece attraction of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade, combining a never-before-seen innovative ride system with physical sets, audio animatronics, video projections, and special effects. Guests join Harry Potter and his friends on an unforgettable, thrilling adventure around Hogwarts in a first-of-its-kind attraction. The Forbidden Journey is considered by many not only to be the best attraction ever created by Universal, but also one of the best attractions in the world by both fans and the theme park industry. Before we jump into how Hogsmeade and Hogwarts magically appear at Universal theme parks, we need to talk about one wizard in particular, the boy who lived. Sometime in 1990, while on a crowded train from Manchester to London, an author by the name of J.K. Rowling came up with an idea for her debut novel. After working on it for over six years, Rowling's first novel, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, would be published in the United Kingdom on June 26, 1997 by Bloomsbury and in the United States on September 1st, 1998 by the Scholastic Corporation. The story of the novel follows Harry Potter, a young wizard who discovers his magical heritage on his 11th birthday when he receives a letter of acceptance to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Harry makes close friends and a few enemies during his first year at the school, and with the help of his friends, Harry faces an attempted comeback by the dark wizard Lord Voldemort, who killed Harry's parents but failed to kill Harry when he was only 15 months old. The novel, which was mainly aimed at a young adult audience as opposed to an audience of middle grade readers, children, or adults, was a critical and financial success, winning numerous book awards and reaching the top of the New York Times list of best-selling fiction in August 1999 and staying near the top of the list for much of 1999 and 2000. The success of The Philosopher's Stone would lead to Rowling writing six sequels, released from 1998 to 2007. The Harry Potter Potter series has found immense popularity, critical acclaim, and commercial success, with the books having sold more than 500 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling book series in history. After the success of Philosopher's Stone, Rowling would sell the movie rights of the first four novels to Warner Brothers for 1 million British pounds, or $1.65 million, in 1999. Following the release of the fourth book, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in July 2000, the first film Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was released on November 16, 2001. Just like the novel it was based on, the movie was a critical and financial hit at the box office, grossing $975.1 million worldwide, making it the highest grossing film of 2001. Each of the novels would be adapted into their own films, with five of the series' eight films among the 50 highest grossing films of all time. The Harry Potter film series is currently the third highest grossing film 
film franchise of all time, with the eight films released grossing over $7.7 .7 billion worldwide. The Harry Potter media franchise is considered one of the most popular of all time, as it has attracted a wide audience of children, teenagers, and adults. With the ever-growing popularity of the book series after the release of Philosopher's Stone in 1997, The Chambers of Secrets in 1998, and The Prisoner of Azkaban in 1999, Universal would approach Rowling in 2000 with a pitch to bring the boy wizard to one of their parks, but not the one you're thinking about. The original concept pitched was to create a live-action stage show at Universal Studios Hollywood similar to The Adventures of Conan, a sword and sorcery spectacular. Known as Harry Potter and the Magic Talisman. The story of the show would have had guests invited to Hogwarts for a special open house, where students including Harry, Ron, and Hermione would demonstrate things they had learned while at school. The finale of the show would have featured a battle between Lord Voldemort, who would have taken the appearance of a multi-headed Hydra serpent, and Harry, Ron, and Hermione would use their broomsticks and wands to defeat it. Talks between Universal and Rowling wouldn't get very far, as she preferred to wait until the first movie was released before before making any licensing deal for theme parks. Rowling would be approached by the Walt Disney Company in June 2003 to bring the franchise to Walt Disney World. Rowling would sign a letter of intent with Disney in 2004, with the intention to develop a Harry Potter section within the Magic Kingdom. Disney's pitch was to create a mini land dedicated to Harry Potter in the newly revamped Fantasyland, with the land consisting of two attractions, an Omnimover ride similar to Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, which would have placed guests in a defense against the Dark Arts class and have them use wands to shoot at targets, and a care of magical creatures petting zoo similar to the Triceratops encounter in the Jurassic Park section of Islands of Adventure. The land would also have a small quick service restaurant based on the Leaky Cauldron. Unhappy with the scale of the land, along with wanting her creation to be as authentic as possible and refusing to cede creative control, Rowling would walk away from negotiations with Disney over a final deal. Universal and Rowling would once again meet in April 2005 with the hopes of this time reaching an agreement. Rowling would be invited to Islands of Adventure, where Universal Creative pitched to her how they would transform the Lost Continent into a land dedicated to all things Harry Potter. While Rowling was impressed with the pitch, she informed Universal Creative that everything that was presented to her was wrong and would need to be changed to make it feel like a real authentic experience seen in the movies were read about in the books. Unlike Disney, Universal wouldn't balk at her demands, such as her insistence to bring aboard Stuart Craig and Alan Gilmore, the production designer and art director from the movies, to ensure that the sets were recreated down to the last detail. Rowling and Universal would sign their own letter of intent sometime in the late spring of 2006. On May 31st, 2007, Universal would officially announce they had secured the theme park rights to the Harry Potter franchise and would be building a newly themed area consisting of attractions, shops, and restaurants known as the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Islands of Adventure, the first major addition to the park since its grand opening in 1999. A 10-year licensing deal was agreed upon between Universal and Warner Brothers, with options for two five-year extensions. Construction on the new area would begin in early 2008. The Wizarding World would occupy close to 20 acres, taking over the Maryland Wood area of the Lost Continent and featuring a mix of re-themed and brand new attractions. As as well as a recreation of Hogsmeade Village in the Hogwarts Castle. The two attractions that were located in Marylandwood, Dueling Dragons and the Flying Unicorn, would be rethemed to fit in with the Wizarding World. The Enchanted Oak Tavern restaurant would be demolished and replaced by the Three Broomsticks restaurant and Hogshead Bar. Most of the new land would be a recreation of Hogsmeade Village, complete with the store seen in the movies. Because of Rowling's insistence that everything in the Wizarding World be as authentic as possible and closely resemble the movie sets. The shops, including Ollivander's Wand Shop, Zonko's Joke Shop, Honeyduke's Sweet Shop, The Owl Post, and Dervish and Banks, would be cramped and small by normal theme park standards. Besides the shops and attractions, any merchandise and food items would require Rowling's approval. Brand name drinks like Coca-Cola were banished from being sold within the Wizarding World, as Rowling felt it didn't fit in with the universe she had created. Besides the re-theming of the Dueling Dragons and the Flying Unicorn Attractions. Universal would create a 
groundbreaking attraction to headline the Wizarding World. One that would have the same impact on the theme park industry just like the amazing adventures of Spider-Man did when it opened at Islands of Adventure in 1999. On September 15, 2009, Universal would reveal that the flagship attraction would be titled Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a thrilling new state-of-the-art attraction that would use entirely new technology never seen before at a Universal theme park. Terry Koo, who worked on the amazing adventures of Spider-Man, would be the creative director of the attraction. The attraction, which was originally codenamed Project Strongarm, would feature a never-before-seen, state-of-the-art ride system. Dynamic Structures, which supplied the ride track for Spider-Man, was presenting a brand new ride concept at the 2004 IAAPA trade show. The concept would employ a robo-coaster, which is a type of simulator attraction based on the same technology as robotic arms used in manufacturing that was designed by the German company KUKA. While the original robo-coaster design would only feature a two-seater vehicle and remain stationary, Dynamic Structures was able to upgrade the ride system to increase the number of riders from two to four, along with the KUKA robotic arms now being mounted to a two-dimensional track that would allow it to move throughout a show building. Universal was so impressed with the ride system that they would sign an exclusive deal with Dynamic Structures, making sure they would be the only company able to use it in their parks. Just like Spider-Man, the attraction would be a combination of physical sets and video projections to bring Harry Potter's world to life. The RoboCoaster system would be used in order to create the illusion that guests were flying throughout the entire ride. The four-seater enchanted benches would be mounted to a robotic arm, which would then be mounted onto a bus bar track. While the ride vehicles in Spider-Man stop in front of screens, Forbidden Journey would take a different approach in order order to prevent riders from catching a glimpse at other benches, ruining the immersion of the attraction. Instead of just using one single screen per scene, the attraction would use multiple parabolic screens instead. The screen would move along in unison with the robotic arms. This way, each group of riders had their own screen while still progressing throughout the entire attraction. The three projection sections of the ride would be installed on a turntable, each carrying six parabolic screens. Each screen is large enough that when in front of each ride bench, it's edges cannot be seen, enabling them to seamlessly fly off into the physical sets at the end of each video section. The tracks ride would follow a simple slow path alongside the screens, but due to the movements of the robotic arms, guests would be convinced that they were flying throughout the Hogwarts castle. The robotic arms can freely dive, turn, and pivot each ride bench within each screen, and had to be programmed to sync up with the action taking place on the screen, just like other simulator attractions. The stars of the movie franchise, Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson would reprise their roles as Harry, Ron, and Hermione for the attraction, along with others such as Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy, Michael Gambon as Albus Dumbledore, and Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid. While offered a role to appear in the attraction, Alan Rickman would decline, as he didn't want to always be associated with his character, Severus Snape. The screen-based scenes were first filmed with the actors on original sets in England, then the ride system, along with the projection apparatus, audio, sets, lighting, and special effects were then installed and programmed to sync up with what was taking place within the film. In order to create the moving images throughout the entire queue, large television screens were built into the walls, surrounded by frames and covered with transparent materials to create the illusion of brush strokes. When Dumbledore, Harry, Ron, and Hermione appear in the queue with the guests, this effect is achieved by the use of the Mutian eyeliner system, a high-definition projection system similar to the Pepper's Ghost effect used in the ballroom scene of Disney's Haunted Mansion. A thin metalized film is placed at a 45 degree angle towards guests, with a projector below the film. The projector projects onto the film, creating the illusion that the characters are physically there. Besides physical sets and video projections, the attraction also includes numerous audio animatronics and special effects. When guests encounter the Hungarian horn-tailed dragon which breathes fire at them, the effect is created by a mixture of fog effects and flickering lights. When the Acromantula Aragog spits venom at the guests, this effect is created by using water. During the Whomping Willow scene, another Kuka robotic arm is used as a branch, crashing down towards the guests. When guests encounter 
encounter a Dementor attempting to steal their souls. This scene was supposed to feature dozens more, but the idea was scrapped as Rowling felt it was too frightening for younger guests. For the Dementor's kiss effect, a photo is snapped of the guests, which is projected on a fog screen. Cold air is blasted towards the guests, and a heartbeat-like sound is played through the subwoofers built into the benches. Cut concepts from the attraction were a scene involving the giant chess pieces from Philosopher's Stone, along with Lord Voldemort making an appearance during the ride. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, along with Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, would officially open to the public on June 18, 2010. The night before the grand opening, guests began the lineup outside the entrance to Islands of Adventure, with the line becoming so long that it circled around City Walk. Once inside the park, guests potentially could have had to wait up to eight hours just to enter the new area. While Universal has refused to reveal how much it costs to build the new land and the attraction, reports have suggested the price tag to build the Wizarding World was over $250 million, with anywhere between $100 and $125 million being dedicated to build the Forbidden Journey. Coming this spring, you can truly be part of Harry Potter's world, where magic becomes real and excitement awaits at every turn. Explore the wizarding world of Harry Potter, a world of magical new adventures only at Universal Orlando Resort, where you can be courageous, be outrageous, be extraordinary. Located within the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade at Islands of Adventure, guests enter the attraction by passing through the gates of Hogwarts Castle. The queue takes guests through the dungeons of the castle, where the Mirror of Erised, the Statue of the One-Eyed Witch, and the entry to Professor Snape's office are located. Exiting through the dungeons and into the greenhouse, guests pass by Mandrakes locked in a cage. There's no need for guests to cover their ears from their fatal shrieks, though, as they are asleep. From the greenhouse, guests enter the castle's Oxford Corridor, where they pass by a statue of the architect of Hogwarts, the school hourglasses that record house points, the griffin statue, and the Hall of Portraits, which contains speaking portraits of the four founders of Hogwarts, along with other witches and wizards. Now in the headmaster's office, Albus Dumbledore welcomes the muggles to Hogwarts, who informs them they have been allowed into the castle in order to attend a lecture on the history of magic by Professor Binns. Guests then make their way to the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom where they encounter Harry, Ron, and Hermione, who appear from underneath the invisibility cloak and suggest the guests skip the lecture and head to a Quidditch game instead. Guests pass by the Fat Lady portrait into the Gryffindor common room and eventually encounter the Sorting Hat, which informs them of safety reminders before they begin their journey. Guests reach the Room of Requirement, where they board their four-passenger enchanted bench. Once guests have boarded their bench, it begins to levitate and with a dousing of flu powder from Hermione, she asks the guests to say observatory in order to transport them to their desired location. The enchanted bench flies off through the flu network and makes its way to the astronomy tower. Now in the observatory, guests fly out from one of its arches and follow Harry and Ron around Hogwarts Castle and towards the Quidditch match. As Harry and Ron travel under a bridge, Hagrid stops the guests to ask ask them if they have seen a dragon anywhere nearby. As soon as Harry gets the riders back en route to the Quidditch match, Hagrid's new pet, a Hungarian horn-tailed dragon, begins to chase them. Trying to escape the dragon, the bench flies into a bridge and after falling out of a hole in the floor of the bridge, guests come face to face with the Hungarian horn-tail, which breathes fire at them. Guests descend into the Forbidden Forest, where they encounter the Acromantula Aragog, who spits venom at them. As Hermione attempts to help the guests away from the spiders and towards the castle using the spell Arania Exime, they encounter the Whomping Willow, which swipes at the guests and eventually knocking them towards the Quidditch pitch. Now in the Quidditch pitch, guests follow the action of Harry and Ron's match, which would be on the grounds for disqualification in the US Quidditch League. After Ron gives up a goal to Slytherin, Dementors arrive at the pitch and Harry attempts to lead the guests away through the pitch's structure and and back to the school, but their bench falls into the abandoned Chamber of Secrets through a cave entrance in a cliff, the same one which Harry, Ron, Fox, and Gildroy Lockhart used to escape from the chamber in the second film. 
Now in the chamber, guests pass by the skeleton of the long-deceased basilisk that lies on the floor, which expels the dark mark of he who must not be named into the air, as the bench is drawn into the mouth of the Salazar Slytherin statue. Dementors emerge from the darkness, with one descending on the guests, attempting to suck out their souls. Just in the nick of time, Harry arrives and uses a protective Patronus charm to make the Dementors flee. Harry and the guests are able to escape the chamber before it caves in and make their way towards the Great Hall, where they are cheered on by many characters from the film franchise. Headmaster Dumbledore sends the guests back through the flu network to the Room of Requirement, where they unboard from their bench and enter Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods, where exclusive Harry Potter gifts and merchandise are sold. The four minute, six second attraction has been widely praised for its immersive theming, story, and state of the art, never before seen ride system. The attraction would win the Golden Ticket Award for Best New Ride in 2010, and Best Dark Ride for five consecutive years from 2011 to 2015. The opening of the Forbidden Journey, along with the rest of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, would lead to a massive boost in attendance at Islands of Adventure, with the park seeing a 29% increase from 5.9 million visitors in 2010 to 7.7 .7 million in 2011. Following the massive success of The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which helped reinvent Islands of Adventure as a must-visit theme park destination, Universal began concocting up plans to bring the Chosen One to their other theme parks. On December 6, 2011, Universal Parks and Resorts would announce plans to not only expand The Wizarding World of Harry Potter at the Universal Orlando Resort, but to bring Hogsmeade to Universal Studios Hollywood as well. It would also be officially announced on May 10, 2011, 2012 that The Wizarding World would be making its way to Universal Studios Japan. More details about the Orlando expansion would be announced on May 8, 2013, revealing that it would be placed within Universal Studios Florida and feature areas themed after Diagon Alley in London. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, would officially open on July 8, 2014. While I would love to go into greater detail about the history of Diagon Alley, I think that story is better saved for some other time. Construction on Japan's Wizarding World would begin in late 2012, with the area officially opening to the public on July 15, 2014, at a cost of 50 billion yen, or $442.2 million to build. The area includes the village of Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Castle, along with the attractions Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and the Flight of the Hippogriff. Unlike the Florida and Hollywood versions, two features found in Japan are Hogwarts Black Lake and live owls living within the area. Even though it was announced in 2011, construction on Hogwarts Hollywood's Wizarding World wouldn't begin until summer 2013, after the LA County Board of Supervisors voted to approve Universal Hollywood's plan to invest in production and tourist projects over the next 25 years, worth an estimated $1.6 billion overall. At an estimated cost of $500 million, the area would require the closure of the Adventures of Curious George play area and the Universal Amphitheater, both of which closed in September 2013. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter would have officially open to the public in Hollywood on April 7, 2016. Just like in Japan, Hollywood's area includes the village of Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Castle, along with Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and the Flight of the Hippogriff. A major difference between the three versions of the Forbidden Journey at each park would be the addition of 3D effects. While Florida's version has never added 3D HD technology, the Japan and Hollywood versions would, in which guests would have to wear 3D Quidditch goggles when on the ride. The Japan Japan version would add 3D effects on May 21st, 2015, while the Hollywood version would feature the effects as soon as it opened on April 7, 2016. However, due to a number of complaints of motion sickness, the 3D element was removed from Hollywood on December 4th, 2016, and from Japan on March 16th, 2018. Just like it was in Florida, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter has been a massive success at Japan and Hollywood. Attendance levels at Universal Studios Japan were up 17% in 2014, 18% in 2015, and set a record number of 
14.9 million visitors in 2017, the most since the park opened in 2001. Attendance levels at Universal Studios Hollywood would see an increase as well, from 7.1 million in 2015 to 8.1 million in 2016 and to 9.1 million in 2017. On January 2nd, 2017, Universal Studios Hollywood would break its single-day attendance record with more than 40,000 visitors and was forced to close its gates for the first time in the park's history, due in part to the popularity of the Wizarding World. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is simply put one of the best theme park attractions ever created. With its state-of-the-art ride system, audio animatronics, 180-degree dome screens, and immersive 4D special effects, the attraction is a one-of-a-kind experience as a must-ride when visiting Islands of Adventure, Universal Studios Japan, or Universal Studios Hollywood. Besides the Forbidden Journey, Hogsmeade is also one of the most immersively themed areas ever created and is a must-experience for anyone who's a fan of the books, movies, or both. Once you've entered Hogsmeade, see the Hogwarts Express and hear John Williams' score from the movies. There's no doubt you'll have a smile on your face as you can't wait to see what awaits you inside the wizarding world of Harry Potter. So that is the theme park history of Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, remember, it matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. Harry Snape! 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 Dumbledore! Are you eternally grateful that people think that you're called J.K. Rowling when your name is really Joe Rowling? <laughs> is um, that helpful? I answer to both. I, I, I can't remember the last time I corrected someone when they said Rowling. In fact, America, I don't. I think everyone thinks I'm J.K. Rowling, so I just answer to both. Rowling is a fairly horrible name, anyway. So, you know.